Thanks, Dave. Almost three decades ago, gamers around the world made Super Mario leap into the air for the very first time. And this simple act of the press and release of a button to jump was pure digital bliss. And what's more fun than jumping? Bouncing. Proceed to the altar. Silence, fool! Seriously? This is not good. Sunset Overdrive is an open world apocalypse adventure from the makers of the Ratchet and Clank and Resistance series Insomniac Games. And it's immediately apparent that they've taken everything that was fun from those games and added a bucket load of colour. The result is pure delicious sugar laden candy. Yeah, it certainly gets the endorphins going, doesn't it? From what we'd seen of this game earlier in the year, we were a little bit sceptical about whether or not they'd get the tone right, weren't we? Yeah, that initial trailer was pretty awful. Yeah, but I'm happy to say this is actually a really fun, light-hearted, exploded jump-a-thon. Let's talk about why. After a brief bit of customization, you begin the game running through the streets from what appears to be a mutant invasion. You soon learn that a popular energy drink has the nasty side effect of turning people into squishy nasties. Naturally, you want out of the city, but standing in your way is a strange, mysterious, invisible wall, hundreds of mutants, robots and bandits. But what makes Sunset Overdrive stand out more than anything else is the style of combat. It's all about motion. If you stand still, they'll murder you. You never stop moving. There's no cars to drive, no reloading. You need to grind, bounce, dash, and chain them all together to keep out of enemy fire. If you stop, death will find you. We recently spoke with Marcus Smith, creative director at Insomniac, about the concept for the game and how it all started. The initial green light pitch that we did to Ted Price uh, and, and Al Hastings and Brian Hastings, who are the owners of Insomniac, was a, a bit of a mess. Uh, Drew Murray, who's the game director, and I, we had this vision for the game, but we didn't want it clouded too much by story and gameplay. So we pitched a game based on ideas and feelings, and we said it's going to be a lot like I Am Legend the Book by Richard Matheson, and here are all these influences, visual influences or pop cultural inf influences. So we had pictures of Iggy Pop, we had uh, Kenyan Hyena Men, we had uh, Jamie Hewlett artwork from Tank Girl and, and Gorillaz. Chill out, Mussolini! I am the troop master, and this is my troop! Crazy fashion that we had found. Um, it was a mess. and. and they basically were very polite and said, how about you come back in a week and tell us the story and the gameplay. We were thinking to ourselves, what would happen if we made a game that was sort of for people who grew up on Ratchet and Clank games, on Spyro the Dragon games, that was a little bit more mature, a little bit more of a broad open world experience. So that, that really was how we developed Sunset Overdrive. Time for some extreme violence! It's more fun to play our game when you're constantly traversing. So you're bouncing off cars, you're wall running, you're grinding. There had been various games that our designers had made, and it was basically floor is lava, like you play as a kid. You jump on couches and you do all these. So, so we actually do have a section of the game where we literally make it floor is lava and you can't touch the ground and you have to find your way around. Um, but that feeling is very prevalent throughout the game. You, you'll traverse through the world not touching the ground ever in a lot of cases. As you get better and better and better, you just you don't need it. You don't need that ground anymore. So it very much is like that kid's game in your living room, jumping from object to object and hopefully not getting your head busted up in stitches and whatnot that your mom always warned you about. I think it's a brave choice, Barjo, for a big open world game to focus its combat so heavily on motion. Yeah, I agree, but you can tell they've worked really hard at it. This is one of the most fluid parkour systems I've ever used in an open world game before. Yeah, and they've hit such a good balance. You're actively involved in the parkour, but it's still forgiving enough to keep that momentum going. Thank you for not making me start at the bottom. And I think the key part of that is forgiving enough. It's not just one button to climb everything. You're constantly making choices about which button to press and which way to go. It really is impressive, isn't it? Yeah, especially the bouncing. Trying to land on something in 3D games is always a little bit challenging, but this accepts misjudged landings and you don't even notice it's doing it. 
I think most of that comes from the world design. The streets are littered with jumping opportunities. Yeah, no matter which way you go, there's always something for you to jump or grind or bounce off. be grinding and undergrinding around the city like a Tony Hawk game except without the skateboard. They've just nailed the controls too. It feels so good to grind on rails and on building rooftops. It's just so much fun grinding, isn't it? Especially the sound effects and the animations that play and all those little chip tune bits of music that pop in. It's an orchestra of sparkles and animation. Besides the fact that you have very little health, part of the reason you're encouraged to move so much is the amp system. The more crazy things you chain together, the higher your style level will rise and the more amp augments activate during combat. What that basically means is move around a lot and you might suddenly start throwing mini tornadoes when you melee or create ice shards when you land. Weapons also have amps once you've leveled them up a bit, so you're always mixing up amps and spicing up the action. Good weapons too, Bajo. Wacky, but functional. Who doesn't love dragons? These fireworks stick to your enemies and set them on fire! Then they explode! And they all have varied levels of effectiveness depending on the enemy you're fighting. But it's when you start switching between them that your own strategies start to form. And this means you get rewarded for trying new things, which is great. I like to freeze enemies and then just chuck everything else I had at them. Throw in a few ground pounds and we've got a party. Along with amps, you can also augment overdrives. There's heaps of them too, and they all have their own bonuses from better style generation to perks for certain weapon types. We pushed through the campaign for the sake of time, but now I'm getting that urge to go back and find some new amps just to see what they can do, and also to obtain more fabulous clothes. Fabulous! There aren't any face sliders, but there's a decent selection of pre-designed faces. And overall, the customization options are good enough to add your own flavor. Are you like a superhero or something? What? Best of all, you can change your appearance easily and as often as you like. You in that top. How brave. Not quite sure about that bearded lady, though, Bajo. Oh, put that on. I'm sure I'll love it almost as much as you will. But back to the combat, it's thrilling, isn't it, when you've got a good chain going and things start firing? And also clever how you become more and more powerful as the fights go on if you're doing well. Yeah, absolutely. And also, it's really satisfying when you finish a fight and you automatically suck up all the <laughs> ammo and stuff. You're a walking vacuum of satisfaction. I'm opening up the door. You can obtain extra amps in a couple of ways, including simple tower defense missions where you place traps and fight off waves. Okay. We're almost done. They're quite fun, I thought, but they take a while to get challenging. Yeah, I think the difficulty lies in multitasking the controls more than anything else. If you're not great at aiming, shooting, jumping, and switching weapons all at the same time, then you might find things tough. But like we said, they've done such a good job with the controls, I don't think that will be an issue for many. Mm. As you progress through the campaign, you'll meet other survivors along the way. My name's Floyd. You'll go about completing quests to progress the story like any other open world game. There are plenty of challenges, including weekly ones, but the story missions you encounter do feel mostly original, especially once you get past the first few hours. I just loved that group of live action role players, Bajo. Yeah, me too, and they were much needed as well. The comedy is fun and self-aware, but until that point, it did feel a little starved for interesting stories and characters. And that changes a bit when you start helping out this troupe. Chandler, sire, mayhap I have a word. Silence, anachronizer! Where be our bard? Uh, he's dead. Can I be the new bard? I'm sick of being a smither. Ye oldie role-playing in an apocalypse totally makes sense. I mean, it's what I would do. Yeah, absolutely, me too. We couldn't test the online at the time of review, but I did have a quick go at E3 earlier this year, and it was pretty fun. Regardless, the mechanics are so solid, it's worth a look based on that alone. You know, Bajo, I was instantly wowed by the production values of this game, but I did have a little bit of open-world fatigue. But the more I played of it, the more I started to really enjoy it especially after you unlock the dash and the ground pound leap moves. Yeah, it's a bit like that, isn't it? You know, I'm not normally into these kind of crackdown superhero open world games, but something about this one really hooked me in. And I think it is that motion focus and those grinding parkour mechanics. They just won me over big time. 
Plus, the lead female voice actor is Stephanie Lemelin, who voiced Artemis in the Young Justice series from a few years back, and she's fantastic. Where did all the food go? You stupid fat pigeons ate all the food! Why? You can get by on cigarette butts and litter! Ugh! The perfect choice for this quirky punk kind of game. Hex, I really like this. I was surprised at how much I liked it, so I'm gonna give it 9 out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, it's a perfect example of what a dedicated next-gen game can look and play like, which is great. More of this, please. I'm giving it 8 out of 10. Our vitals! Yay! You didn't have any trouble, did you? Nah, typical quest stuff. Bad guys, bad trees, junkyard side quests. Enjoy that foot spot.